And how is this album different for you? Um, I think it's a little more complex. It's a little more of a storyline. Mm. Um, it's definitely, you know, about my me fleeing the city and going to the forest and then fleeing the forest and back into the city. And sort of it's a um, there's sort of a story there, an abstract story that I think I'm trying to tell. Um, and then uh, I've learned a lot more. You know, this is all a learning process for me. Like when I first started doing it, I never thought I'd be making a living off of it. It was kind of like just my need to create. And so... Um, I think my recording process has gotten better over time because some of those early recordings of mine, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> and there was a lot of sonic issues, sort of, you know, boominess or, you know, I didn't necessarily know the exact right way to record the cello. Um, so I'm still always experimenting, but some of the kinks have been worked out in my process. One other thing, though, that changed was that I moved from the city to the country. And I used to have this great studio in San Francisco. And now I have a nine by nine wood wood room with low ceilings mm. <laughs> so um i actually have a less ideal recording environment than i had when i did in toma and you had a warehouse right yeah yeah me and a bunch of people and you would perform there a lot mm -hmm. you sort of developed yep. your sound there yeah definitely warehouse parties that kind of thing nice <laughs> and how is it living in the woods like how has that affected the way you write well i don't have the um uh necessarily the access to the city that i used to have although I travel a lot more than I ever did before. So now it's like I travel to work with musicians all over the world. But um, it's definitely affected me in that uh, you can't escape as easily. So in the city, I would go into the studio, and if I got kind of frustrated or I hit a brick wall, I would just walk outside and go to the cafe. And here um, I walk inside, walk outside and I go into the woods. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that has a definitely a different, different effect on your music. The forest is less distracting, for better mm -hmm. or worse. <laughs> this album is is absolutely beautiful. It's oh, very compelling. You. It's very powerful, and Thanks. I I could sort of hear the the evolution mm -hmm. from the first. You, it sounds like you're using a, some more effects, some more like reverb, and some other like reverse things. And yeah, I did I did reverse a few things. Um, I try I never try to. Uh, I don't like to manipulate the cello too much. Um, so, like I'll record a phrase, and then I might chop it up into little segments, and I might play it backwards, but. Um, I don't use a lot of, um, I never detune it or anything like that. It's mm -hmm. kind of, I think of it as being, it's still the pure cello. You're sort of um, an inspiration for a lot of people that, the you know, the DIY, the do-it-yourself mm -hmm. artist. What has sort of been um, your philosophy and, and how you've stayed, you seem to stay very true to what you set out intention, you know, in the mm -hmm. beginning to do and have done very, very well. Um, so <laughs> what is sort of, how do you stay focused? How do you stay grounded and how do you just, What's your secret <laughs> for those listening that are, you know, want to do what you're doing? it is really important to always be yourself. And it, it sounds, you know, kind of cheesy to say it that way, but to like every, you know, every new opportunity that comes along, I just do a little gut check. I'm like, is this really me? You know, does this really like match my values? And I, I'm, I'm a pretty principled person, almost to a fault sometimes. And um, it just matters to me that like I live my life a particular way and that I interact with people a certain way. And, you know, it's like that thing of, you know, be the change you want to see in the world. Mm -hmm. So um, so I've had the same modus operandi since I started, which is um, never to compromise the music. And um, that often in the beginning, that meant that I had to work by myself because, no, you know, no label or agent or anything was interested. They didn't quite know where to put you, right? <laughs> exactly. I got a lot of no's in the beginning. Mm. And since um, not doing it was not an option, I just did it myself. And then, meanwhile, the record industry collapsed. <laughs> and now, suddenly, they're looking to people like me mm. to be like, how do you do it yourself? Because they have to do it themselves as well. Yeah. So it's kind of ironic. I thought it was very interesting <laughs> that you are so successful in the classical genre. Mm -hmm. And it's al I feel almost like you're, you're going inside that genre and rewriting it. Or at mm. least rewriting a page of it, mm -hmm. you know, to incorporate this new sound. Right. Well, the classical world is also changing because they, you know, they have declining audiences and the money's sort of decreasing for them as well. And um, I feel very much like what I do is an extension of the classical realm. Mm. Um, and it's kind of funny that classical got stuck in this little bucket and it doesn't change. You know, um, I don't think that was ever would have been the intention of a lot of the composers, mm. you know. So um, I feel like I'm just growing and evolving because you grow and evolve or you die, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's all I'm doing. And it's just um, I've sort of been a little bit at war with the classical world because my music is accessible, which isn't necessarily a plus <laughs> if you're in the world of modern composition. Um, but I just decided not to care about it 
So I, I really don't care. It's music, you know. If you like it, you like it. If you don't like it, you don't like it. That's just not a big deal. Absolutely. <laughs> and how has um, internet been a, a role mm. in your success and, and reaching people? Well, I don't think I could have the career I have without the internet, obviously, because I can reach somebody in Singapore um, just as easily as I can reach somebody who's in a town over from me. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, I mean, the internet is how I make a living. So, you know, it's... Uh, it allows like somebody like me who is independent to have almost the same level of voice that someone who's got like a marketing campaign behind them has. Mm -hmm. um, but my success is all word of mouth. Like there might be a few little media blips here and there, but it really is just like somebody likes it and they give a CD to a friend, you know, or they bring somebody to a concert and, and th that feels very real and very solid. So um, it's very slow and incremental, mm -hmm. <laughs> but the internet makes it definitely possible. And you, you are very active on your, your Twitter account. It's, yeah. It is fun to like see. I, I was like, she's in Boston, you know? <laughs> so that's, yeah. and you have. It's, it's, it's a little outlet for me in a way, you know? It's kind of like a, it's just a way for me to express myself. And, you know, it, especially when I was, when I was first gave birth and I was nursing the baby and, you know, you're, you're sort of in bed all the whole time with the baby. And uh, it was kind of a good outlet for me to not, not have total cabin fever. It was like, you know, I've just been inside for four days and haven't done anything except change diapers and nurse. And now I could just like tweet. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's like within reason that all that stuff is good. You don't want to take it too far. Right. <laughs> and so you're, so you're going to be touring now for the next month or two, right? I'm going to try to tour this year as much as possible because mm. um, I haven't been able to tour for a while, you know, because I was very pregnant. And then um, and before that, I was, um, you know, working with other musicians and, and touring with them. But I would really, it's been a while since I've done my own tour. And um, so I, um, this is, you know, out of the trees, leg one. And then in May, I'm going to be doing a lot of the Midwest. Um, and I think in September and, you know, I'd like to hit as much of the country as possible. Very so, exciting. Yeah. Anyone you're looking to collaborate in the near future with? Oh, oh, there's so many. I hate to I hate to name <laughs> them because then it'll exclude the others. <laughs> well, I know you played with Khaki King, who's phenomenal. Yeah. Oh, she was great. Actually, that was that was wonderful to to tour with her, even though it was only four shows. Because I've admired her for a long time mm. too, as being you know another woman who's out there doing it. And I I, I have a thing for female musicians because it's harder, I think, for them. And um, and I, I really like to to meet them on the road. So that's why I love working with Amanda Palmer or with Imogen. So um. There's a bunch of other female musicians who I'd like to work with, and then some men, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's very politically yeah. correct and inclusive. <laughs> um, great. So you're playing tonight, and mm -hmm. you sold it out, and you sold out the show a couple nights ago. Yeah, for tomorrow, too. I think it sold out as well. So Congratulations. Yeah. And Thanks. it sounds like the word of mouth is, is spreading for you. Hopefully. Yeah. Fingers crossed. It could all come crashing down at any moment, and I'm always ready to go back to being a software programmer. Do you miss that at all? Um, it's a definite part of my brain. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, you call yourself a, what, an information architect and yeah. a classical musician. Yeah. Yeah. It's that, it's that thing of like ordering a chaotic world. I think that's my, that's my role in life. It does feel good, right? <laughs> yeah. So I can, it's like I can order little snippets of audio or I can order like, um, arts and humanities databases. <laughs> Where, where's, uh, just uh, one other question. Where's your favorite place to perform? Because I know you perform, you perform in so many different places. Mm. I mean, airports and... My favorite place. You know, this is really sorry to say, but um, I'm totally driven by my stomach. So I always remember what I ate in a venue. <laughs> so wherever there's good food. So I have to say that, like, um, Europe is high on the list just because they feed you so well. Well, you'll make DJ Big Man very happy because yeah. he's from Europe. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It, it, I know that that's, it sounds like a really lame thing, but I just... I always remember, like, oh, that was the venue where I had the salmon and the oysters. And <laughs> Girl, I'm going there again. Yeah. <laughs> Zoe, thank you so much for stopping by today. <laughs> and again, thank you. <laughs> my name is Roro, and you're listening to the Berkeley Internet Radio Network. You're listening to the Berkeley Internet Radio Network. Yeah.